So I'd like to talk about using Elastic Beanstalk as a way to understand how Amazon thinks you should deploy applications. So Beanstalk is this PaaS service that you can feed it an application and it will spin up and manage all of the infrastructure for you. Security groups, IAM roles, compute, load balancers, um, auto scaling, all of that's handled for you without writing any really any code at all, practically. So I've been I've played in the past with using Tika as a document parser and using Beanstalk as a way to stand it up. And it was pretty straightforward. And then Today, I was kind of playing around wondering, like, how does Beanstalk actually work? And it turns out the guts of Beanstalk are actually exposed to you. What they do, so we're going to use as an example um, this application, which is a Tika parser. It's just a jar file. You deploy it. It stands up a web endpoint. And then you can basically feed it any kind of document. It'll give you the text back. And so some people have built, put this into Lambdas, and then they listen for document uploads into S3 or blob storage, and then they use those notification messages, go back and get the image file out of the blob store, and then they parse it, and then they actually fade it to Elasticsearch or put it back in the blob store. So we're not going to do any of that. I just want to show you, like, what does Amazon actually do when they stand up a pass service, and can you use it to your own benefit? So the pass service I'm going to do, let's just see here. I'm going to create this is just, I've already initialized this. I'm basically going to deploy this into, um, into US East 2 in Ohio. And I have an SSH key. Oh, right. So the things to make Beanstalk work, which are not really germane to this talk, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. You got to have your AWS access key ID and secret key, and you got to have an SSH pair so that you can SSH into the EC2 instances, which we're not going to do. And you got to have Python installed because we're going to run the Elastic Beanstalk command line, and then you got to have the CLI installed, right? So you got to do these steps right here. So I've already got it installed over here, and this isn't going to be terribly exciting. And we're going to deploy the jar file into the cloud and see what it says. What's going to happen actually is Beanstalk creates a cloud formation template. It uploads your configuration to an S3 bucket, and then it creates a cloud formation template, and it runs the cloud formation temp template for you. And I think this is like, so cool because a lot of times you're like, man, I want an ALB and then I got to get my security groups right and I kind of want to restrict them. And if somebody could just do a template generator for you, you could go hack on that template and then make it work, right? And tune it for what you want to do. So in the past servers, you can also do database access and that kind of stuff. The Tinker parser doesn't have any of that. You just feed it something, it gives it back. The logs go to CloudTrail, CloudWatch, CloudTrail, right? All right, so you can see here that um, we're gonna, we put, uh, put our configuration up in an S3 bucket and then it started creating groups. It created a target group, a security group. It's going to create a whole bunch of resources. So what are those resources? Let's go look. This is actually, it turns out it actually creates a fair amount for you, right? So it creates a cloud, first it uploads the configuration and then it generates a cloud formation template. And then it generates two security groups because this is a web app. It is, and oh, and it creates an Elastic Beanstalk application. So if you go to any of these icons, you can go see what's going on, right? So, and then it creates two security groups, one for the ALB and one for the EC2 cluster, right? So it's going to spin up one to end services and it's going to automatically auto scale because Beanstalk does it for you. And this is always really confusing. You got to hook up an auto scale group. You got to create auto scale policies and you got to figure out how to make that work. If you do this in Beanstalk, you can see how they do it and you can just copy the template or you can be super smart and write your own. So what we're going to do is, what it's going to do is the cloud formation template is going to create an ALB. It's going to add a single listener. It's going to add a single target group and the target group is going to point at the EC2 instances that are being spun up for this, right? And then it's going to attach an auto scale to that target group. And let's see. Oh, and this thing comes in on port 80. And what's interesting for the Java program that is Apache Tika is that it actually listens on 9998. But you can actually tell Beanstalk when it's running what port it's going to listen on. And they put a proxy on the EC2 instance for you. And the reason we know that is when we look at the target group between the ALB listener and the EC2 instances, we see they only communicate on port 80. 
I didn't do 443, but you might be able to. I didn't play with it. So it did it on port 80, right? And so somewhere in between on the EC2, there's a proxy server that's mapping port 80 to 9998. All right, and then there it creates an auto scale group. It hooks it to the target group. And, um, and what happens is it puts CloudWatch alarms out on the EC2 instances. Oh, I guess I need to draw another line. Anyway, what actually happens is the CloudTrail logs, generate some metrics, goes to CloudWatch, CloudWatch alarms are put on it, and auto scale group policies execute whenever the alarms fire. So the alarms are watching the metrics of the machines in the auto scale group, and then the policies execute when the alarms go off. And one of these is a low alarm so that it scales down, and one's a high alarm so it scales up. So what'll happen is, as these EC2 instances generate logs, it, the CloudTrail, CloudWatch alarms will be generated and the auto scale policies are bound to the CloudWatch alarms and then that will actually cause those policies to cause the auto scale group to scale up and down, right? And this, if you look, the reason this arrow is this way is because these two are bound together. Um, auto scale groups are bound to a target group and then when they find out that that target group is actually a group of EC2 machines. Man, does this box belong somewhere else? I'll have to go look, right? But this is basically the binder layer between the listener and the EC2. It does the right thing with IAM roles for you, right? So it creates an elastic Beanstalk EC2 role that's actually bound to these EC2 instances. Um, and that's actually the web tier, the worker, and I don't know why it does the multi-container Docker. I was kind of hoping this was deployed in ECS, but if it is, you can't see it in the console. And then there's a service role, right? And so that's basically the service itself and the enhanced health. And then there's an auto scaling role, which is bound into this area. And there's a load balancing role that's tied into these, right? So if you, and you can go out and look at all of these, right? So if you deploy Tika, as an example, into this environment using the commands on the wiki page, you will end up with all of this spun up. Ah, and what's the cool part of that? Well, besides the fact that you have a working app, they actually created this cloud formation template. And if you go to the template page, and this is horribly for formatted, but basically this is gonna be a cloud formation template with everything in it. You could easily take this JSON and reformat it. So if I click on the view and designer, and I'm patient, which I am totally not patient. It will actually draw this Beanstalk app for you and show you all of the components that are in it. Do, do, do. So you can actually see here, well, you can't see by that, but if we start to move these things around, right, we can kind of get a feel for what's happening here, right? And so we could build this thing out and get a feel for it. And it would probably be not as cool as my drawing, but it's not bad. So that's it. That's all I got to say. Go to Beanstalk, build an app. You can use this blog article here as an example, and then just deploy a working jar. It's super simple since the jar you can just download, and then you can play around with it and change the parameters and then see what happens and how this thing looks. And that's it. I hope that's useful.